All right, and I think we are live. Not sure, but um, looks like everything is going. The timer is going. Um, hopefully, my audio is going. And really, the purpose of this uh, tonight is it just been a while since I've done a live stream. In fact, the first thing I ever did on this channel was a live stream back at the end of January 2021. And at that time, I was really considering just jumping in and doing videos. And that did not happen. I just had, you know, things going on, personal life stuff. I mean, nothing too serious, just kind of the everyday stress. And I, I couldn't concentrate on this. So I just kind of wanted to come on, help celebrate the new year, even though we are a little ways away from the actual new year. I saw that Simon, uh, LCS over in London, they have celebrated, obviously, a couple hours ago. And I know that Martin's over doing a live right now. I'm not trying to take away from anything he's doing. He puts on a great live stream every week. Hey, Paladin. Happy New Year. You are the first. Welcome in. Not planning to be on here too long. I don't know. I'm going to have a pipe, so maybe 20, 30 minutes. Just see how things go. And uh, yeah, yeah, you're the first, man. I, you know, I I appreciate you watching. Uh, you comment on a lot of my videos. I don't know. I don't know how you do it because you must be subscribed to so many people and... Um, you know, I, I just appreciate you interacting with, with me. I definitely watch your stuff too. So um, that's one thing. It's kind of weird. Uh, YTPC is like, I, I feel like it's really grown in the last, you know, last few years. Uh, maybe that's just me kind of uh, participating a little more. But I don't know. I mean, there, there are so many people, so many channels doing good videos. It's really impossible to follow everybody. And... Um, You know, you want to, you know, you get support from people, uh, subscribers, and you got new people coming in all the time. Um, you want to support everyone as much as, you know, you've gotten. You want to give as much as that you've gotten from this, too. And it's, I don't know if it's even possible. But Paladin, I think you do a really good job. A lot of people do a man, really good job. I'm just, I'm just trying to get into this. I'm, I'm so new to the video thing that, uh. Um, I'm really trying to get through, I saw like, uh, I watched this channel called think media. It's really about people starting YouTube channels and like, like people that are serious about YouTube, you know, they're trying to make a career out of it or they use it for a business or something where what we do here is just really casual. And uh, I'm always blown away by just the, the positivity in the YTPC. Hopefully you can, everyone, or you can hear me. Okay. And I'm not just blowing out your ears here got this microphone i never know what the best setting is oh oh no i i know i i know that i i understand that and it's just it's hard not to feel um you know pressure to put out more videos or to watch everyone's videos and i i i totally understand like no one really expects that um, it's totally unreasonable to expect someone to watch everything you do and to watch everyone that you do. Now, I mean, there's, there's like the core group of people that, you know, a lot of people watch. Ah, thanks, Aaron. Thanks for letting me know. Um, we've got this microphone set just about 12 o'clock noon. I usually have it up higher for videos and I feel like that's sometimes too loud, but, um, yeah, YTPC, it's a really interesting group. Um, for the most part, vast majority, very positive and, uh, very encouraging for someone who not quite sure about making videos or participating. And I, I would encourage everyone to participate. Um, it's just a great thing. It's like a weird, um, like YouTube is a meeting place where people kind of come in, you know, chat for a while, watch some videos and, and leave. And, you know, you see... 
you see people start a channel and they go really hard for one or two months and you know they're making videos every week or you know they'll put out a few videos a week and it just i can just imagine it it's just like they get overwhelmed and then they're gone and you never hear anything from them again and i think it's too bad you know i think because you want you know you do want these people um to interact and participate yeah i know matches matches video the white tpc wannabes that's an excellent video i mean he hits on all the points and yeah i would encourage anyone to go watch that video because he talks about everything that you really need to do you know lays it out real nice and uh i'm even working on something he talks about in there which is kind of you know how you close out a video your outro and i have this thing that i usually um, when i take care and happy smokes a lot of the time and that sounds like that'd be a good outro but it's um it comes across so awkward when i try to do it at the end of a video so that's something i'm working on um instead of just saying okay that's it time to cut it off gotta go it's good to have that thing that you just kind of leads to the end of a video and uh yeah getting fixated on the wrong things like feeling like well one thing like okay so like you need video content so in order to get video content then you buy more pipes and more tobacco and you have all these yabos and that's really not the point i mean it's easy enough to get caught up in that anyway without it i mean so i started i started smoking a pipe back in 2017 it was july kind of right before fourth of july and i feel like i've done pretty good <laughs> yeah 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 like, whoops uh yeah ran up that credit card what's this smoking pipes bill every week mm, no, nothing but um you know i really uh i started with uh, the pipe nook both Eddie Gray's videos and uh, buying off the pipe nook. And, he, you know, he said that, you know, the, the purpose of his website has been to really kind of narrow down the focus for people just kind of coming in um, to give them some good options on how to get started. And I really, you know, sometimes it's, li it is limited when you look at like pipes and cigars and smokingpipes.com and they have hundreds, thousands of pipes available. And, you look at Eddie Gray's site and he might have, I don't know if, I mean, he has a lot more now, 50 or so. Um, yeah, half and half. Um, I've got the one tin here. I've got another one out in the garage. That was the replacement that um, I was sent because this one came opened. So um, I'm really into the Codger blends for sure. And they never go bad. So uh this year, I just I decided uh, I'm just gonna buy buy the tubs because the the pouches are kind of hard to find. Especially Carter Hall is gone, Prince Albert is gone. And you can only buy the tub. So yeah, it's weird. I wish you know I wish you could sell the tins on his website again too. Yeah, more half and half. Um, half and half, I was like, maybe my number three. I like uh, Carter Hall and Sir Walter Raleigh, really kind of right there, one and one and two. Yeah, change the recipe. That's. I remember uh, Eddie Gray used to carry him on his website, and he talked about, he had a video where he's, he talked about these kind of get passed around a little bit, and uh, I kind of knew that. I mean, I, I knew ownership had changed throughout the decades but even since i've been involved in this few years you know they changed production from tucker georgia over to to denmark and i thought when i first tried them i thought these aren't these are not the same at all i mean they were similar but not it's like this isn't what i like and now uh, come to find out the tubs are actually a little 
a little better, a lot more close to what they used to be. And I, I think that has to do a lot with the moisture content and the pouches I got, uh, especially Sir Walter Raleigh, add a lot more moisture in there. And obviously more moisture uh, that adds to the weight so you get less tobacco. And I thought that first pouch was pretty thin. So, yeah, Sir Walter Raleigh, you just dry it out. It's it's pretty close to the older stuff. Yeah, Paladin. I don't, I don't know. So, Cat Dead Piper had some Paladin Black Cherry maybe last summer. I think maybe that was before. It must have been older. Um, the Sir Walter Raleigh from Denmark, I didn't find it nasty. Just at first, it it didn't have the same essence that I really liked. So Sir Walter Raleigh was like second or third tobacco I had. I, I had Captain Black Gold, and then it was like Lane BCA maybe, and then Sir Walter Raleigh. And when I first had Sir Walter Raleigh, it was really weird. It was, I thought it was so dry. It's like really dry in this um, cube cut stuff I'd never seen. Like I, like the Captain Black Gold was ribbon cut. I thought it was supposed to be like that. So I dumped some water in it thinking I needed to be rehydrated. And uh, so trying new blends, you know, because it took about a pouch. And I find like if you're trying a new blend, you have to smoke through like two ounces to really get a good feel for what it is because it's kind of a weird phenomenon that I've noticed. Like if you open a brand new tin, you might not get any flavor. And then you're going to think like, eh, I don't like this. <laughs> this is terrible. And set it aside or give it away or throw it out. Like I, I wouldn't throw any tobacco away. I, I've only thrown one away, and that was that was some very old Lane BCA that tasted the, like a plastic tasted like the plastic bag. So I tossed it. Yeah, Cornell and Deal. I that's I've ordered a lot of Cornell and Deal, uh, especially Eddie Gray carried a lot of it, and a lot of videos are about Cornell and Deal blends. Yeah, that's what I think. A blend has to breathe, and you. When you open a tin, like, go ahead and try it. And you're going to wait two, three, four days. It's going to change a little bit. And it's going to be open for a few weeks, and it's going to change a little bit. And I think, you know, that's just some moisture kind of working its way out of there. And um, after a few weeks, it's kind of going to be what it is. And then it's going to start to dry out. Now, I haven't really had anything I had to worry about jarring up too much. I, I usually been pretty good about working through a tin, but now I'm accumulating a lot more. So um, start jarring stuff up. And I'm, I'm, I've been, like this year especially, buying more bulk stuff like Haunted Bookshop, or, you know, Pegasus, things I know I like. I just buy in bulk. I haven't tried anything from Watch City. I've looked at them a, a little bit. Um, I watch Cane Rod Piper a lot, and I find like he has a really similar taste. Things that he likes, I'm gonna like. Um, he doesn't like La Kia at all. I don't like La Kia at all. Um, very few La Kia blends I would even I would even want. Like the, the uh, Watch City English. I'm a little leery of English stuff now, and it's not that I don't like it. It's just I don't want a whole tin of it, you know. And I found some pretty good lot of key stuff. Um, I don't think I didn't get into this early enough to really have any Siri, and I think that was already pretty much gone. All right, Watch City makes some good English stuff. I, I might have to give them a try. Um, so I ordered from. Four noggins, and they had an English blend called bread loaf, I think. And that, you know, English is a weird kind of an odd term because it, it 
covers so much, and it's not necessarily Latakia, even though I think you know, think of English as Latakia. I haven't had Edward Eddie G. But that bread loaf was, um, I think, like Orientals in Virginia. And I thought it was pretty good. But there again, even though that, that was a bulk blend, and that came, that changed over over a few weeks too. That had kind of a weird uh, peanut butter flavor going on. Okay, I'll... <laughs> I'll have to try it. You know, I saw it um, placed an order a while ago. And I, I saw that. I I almost got it. Yeah, peanut butter. Very, I mean, very subtle. As tobacco tasting is subtle, right? Like uh, like bourbon tasting. So yeah, for I've got uh, some Pinot Grigio going and uh, bourbon. This is uh, very old Barton. Which is a fairly low end bourbon, but I'm kind of a connoisseur of uh, like bottom shelf bourbons, and it, it's um, well, I've, I've been doing it for quite a while now. So I've kind of I've worked through all the stuff that you you don't want to drink, and I've kind of hit on a few that are okay. Like my go to is pretty much Evan Williams. Um, oh, I've been watching a really good YouTube channel. Um, called like SLB whiskey or SLB distilleries. And it's this guy basically has a basement bar and it's all about bourbon. Like they're like really high end stuff down to the very budget. So, um, yeah, I mean, I have a hard time spending a lot of money for, you know, something like, well, I mean, it goes to like a tobacco blend too. Like something, if I'm going to have it every day and I'm going to go through more of it, I don't want to spend too much on a bottle, which I think that was $14.99 for a $7.50. And, you know, it's okay. Oh, yeah, Aaron Whistlepig. That was, <laughs> I don't know what they're charging for that anymore. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, I think that's, that's Canadian, too. And honestly, that's the only Canadian whiskey I've ever had that was worth drinking. Okay, Forged Oak. I don't think I've ever had that. Well, it wasn't... Whistle Pig, wasn't that like 75 bucks 10 years ago? So who knows what it is now? But, uh... And then, uh, you know, I'm into scotch a little bit. Again, budget scotch, and... Not the low end budget scotch is like fifteen dollars, you know, thirty five for a decent bottle because scotch is, you 